Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings, much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, Geico has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. Geico, expect great savings and a whole lot more. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are honored to be one of the top-rated shows about attracting and sustaining healthy relationships, especially in midlife. And today, I am honored to be speaking with author, master teacher, and world-renowned expert on A Course of Miracles, Carol Howe. And she's going to be speaking about relationships and how they are the path to self-discovery. That's a very cool topic. We haven't really talked about it in this way, and so I'm, I'm really excited to talk to her. And um, before I bring her on, I just want to talk a little bit about what I do and um, how I help women over 40 who come to me often as the last glimmer of hope. They have worked with other people. They have read tons of books. They've attended retreats, and they still haven't been able to figure out why they're struggling so much in having the love that they want. And what I find really quickly is that um, because I go really deep with my clients and really unlock the patterns of the past, um, I look at connections between your family of origin and why you keep attracting the same partner over and over again until you do the healing work. Um, It's not just about getting tools for how to date successfully. It really is about how to be a successful human, and that's really what I teach. Uh, I just gave a workshop on Sunday in Manhattan on online dating, and I think the attendees were a little surprised to discover that what they learned was so much more than online dating skills. They learned how to set clear boundaries, how to communicate more effectively, and how to really understand men, because if we just see the world through our lens, we are not very successful in life. Um, Every week I share a tip about how to be a woman of value. That is my catchphrase. And this week's tip is practice saying no. No, that doesn't work for me. We are so used to that auto yes. Somebody asks you to volunteer for something. Um, I saw it this morning on a client's uh, email exchange on Match.com where a man's first email to her was, hi, let's have lunch at such and such a place, and he signed his name. I mean, he hadn't even connected with her. She doesn't know him, and her auto yes was, "Uh, that sounds lovely. Uh, How about we get in touch after I come back from my vacation? But what she really wanted to say is, no, thank you. I'm really not interested. I looked at your profile. It doesn't look like we're a good match. So it's not unkind to say no when you mean no. It's actually unkind to say yes and lead somebody on and then feel really icky and out of alignment when you say yes when you mean no. Um, So two more things that I always like to just connect you to my website, lastfirstdate.com, where if you don't yet have my free guide on the top 10 reasons why men pull away or disappear, Please go there after the show, lastfirstdate.com, and get yourself a copy. And if you're not yet in my private Facebook group, which is called Your Last First Date, if you're a woman over 40 and you are dating or in a relationship and you would like some some really solid support from an amazing group of women, please join us. It's called Your Last First Date. Now I'm going to introduce my special guest, Carol Howe. She is an author a master teacher and world-renowned expert on A Course in Miracles, which is a self-study course for finding peace of mind through healing relationships. She is a friend of Bill Thetford, whose biography she wrote, which is called Never Forget to Laugh. She is widely known for her ability to guide anyone to peace of mind with simple, humorous, and practical solutions. I love the humorous. 
And over the years, she's successfully helped thousands around the globe to apply the transforming principles of A Course in Miracles to their lives. So join me now for episode number 265, Relationships, the Path to Self-Discovery. Hey, Carol, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. And boy, do I love what you just said about our learning not to be honest and learning to people please instead and learning not to stand up for ourselves because that so contaminates relationships, either before we Mm -hmm. get into them or during them. So looking at all of our baggage that we bring into relationships and learning how to let it go is really an important thing. So thank you for saying that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I I have such a strong passion for spreading this message and teaching the tools to actually accomplish it because it's one thing to say, well, I don't want to say that auto yes or I don't want to be inauthentic, but I want to be nice and so I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And I think we need to have the languaging around it, which is why I love teaching people even like scripts for how to say no effectively without being mean and hurtful. Um, Absolutely. Because we're not there to manage everybody else's emotions. We have to manage our own no. first. And, you know, when we realize that we learn those things very early on in order to stay safe, because after all, mm-hmm. young animals, and we as human beings are young animals, um, staying alive and staying safe and trying to be secure is job one. And we learn Mm -hmm. very early on these strategies for what we have to do to literally kind of make it as little people there. And the problem is we grow up with that and we don't ever question that. In other words, that possibly made sense when we were two but not as an adult. But no adult gets to be 23 or 4 years old when you finally have your frontal lobe of your brain fully developed. Nobody says, gee, are all the things that I learned in life true? Do I need to pay attention Mm -hmm. to it? It would be great if we did that, but we don't. And so we bring lots of stuff along with us unwittingly, unknowingly, and it really ruins relationships as well as many other Mm -hmm. aspects of life if we don't know those things. So yes, absolutely, like and I think explore. what you, yeah, and I think a lot of people stay in that safe mode and the you know the survival the survival mode and don't get to the thriving mode and and um, they don't really know how to get there and so like even in my Facebook group, my whole focus is to keep people positive and thinking about next steps and how to stay unstuck in this whole quest for love because. It's very easy to get into a victim state and feel like you're the only one and it's never going to happen for you. And I see these posts all the time and I'm like, you know, there's no space in here for victim talk. (laughs) Like we're here to provide some solutions and empathy and, um, you know, know that there's always choices. Absolutely. It's kind of like we have a problem of flat earth thinking, (laughs) like medieval Mm. people looked out there and they saw, well, look, I can see where the water ends and the sky begins. Clearly the earth is flat. And then they Mm -hmm. um, allowed that false belief to dictate limitations to them. Like I can't go out there (laughs) because I'll fall off the edge. And the problem is, is that learning to stay safe when we're very little has created a very small cramped comfort zone for us to live in. And until we realize, you know, I can be safe stretching those boundaries, I can be safe starting to take other steps, and that's the only way you can do it. You can't just think about it and think this would be a good idea. You have to, as has so famously been said, face the fear and do it anyway. And if that Mm -hmm. means saying no when you mean no, yes when you mean yes, and then many other things in a more honest way, once you're actually in a relationship or moving into a relationship. Because, unfortunately, we've all learned it's in our culture. It's kind of in the water supply <laughs> almost that, that the reason we get into relationships is to try to get something we don't already have. And that's bound to fail (laughs) because Mm -hmm. primarily we end up with two people going into a relationship from a place of need, at least in some area of life. 
It's like I'm going to get into this relationship to see what I can get that I feel like is missing, whether that's love, whether that's approval, whether that's safety, whether, you know, whatever that is. So look at the dynamic here. We have two people going into a single relationship, but we've got two purposes for the relationship. It's like this person's purpose is to get their way. This person's purpose is to get their way. So that is clearly not a common purpose or common ground, and this seems to kind of go over our heads in some way, especially because we don't talk about it. We really have contracts for people that we kind of slip under the table but wouldn't dare begin to talk about, like, okay, if I'm going to be in this relationship, this is really what my requirements are, or this is really what I think I have to do, or this is the way you have to be, and people can kind of sugarcoat that for a little while in the beginning, but of course it's not going to work in the long run. The only way relationships can really be healing and successful is to have one single common purpose for the relationship rather than two separate ones where I'm actually, it's like two half-filled glasses of water with each one trying to fill up from the other and retain what they already have. Does that make sense? Mm. You're saying a lot here, and I'm just like, (laughs) I want to reflect a little bit because it's so much good stuff. Um, First of all, I love the flat earth thinking. I have to remember that Mm -hmm. one because I just, Mm -hmm. it's, captures it so well it's it's that Mm -hmm. really narrow perspective on life and it really does go back to what keeps you safe instead of how can i open my mind um i I saw something today that was really beautiful it was a, a little documentary about a woman who turned 90 she was brought up um jewish of and being faithful and as she when she got the internet uh, probably about 5 years earlier she started to ask questions and um first it started with just watching cute little videos and then it was like meaning of life questions and finding out you know maybe maybe everything i believed up until now is not really true for me anymore and uh, so the whole thing was about her trying bacon for the first time and it, it just as she became an atheist and and realized that that not having faith was more courageous than having faith and um, and finding her truth and so yes. you know here was this ninety year old woman who who finally found what was true for her and you know hopefully we find people who can expand their minds much earlier in life um, but Absolutely. how beautiful to see that you know to see her really pushing against the boundaries and doing it in spite of what people might think. Absolutely. That that is the key to begin to realize and to be to begin to cultivate the idea that we really are already, whether we realize it or not, we're already safe, we're already loved, we're already valuable, we already have exactly the combination of you might say talents, experience uh, and so on that we need to live a really happy life. But this is a problem of needing to get our brains rewired about ourselves, about relationships, about what they're for, and so on, because not only like uh, flat earth thinking is a good idea, everybody now is so technically competent that we sure do know that if something's wrong with a computer or a phone, we don't go, oh, well, darn, my computer or my phone doesn't work, I guess, well, okay, nobody does that. (laughs) You know, you run Mm -hmm. right to the store, you run right to an expert, you download updates, you do whatever you have to do. You don't tolerate a hacked or a malfunctioning piece of technology. And what we don't realize is we have to be rewired too. In other words, I have a computer background long ago before I got into all of the personal business that I do now. So I'm very familiar with what's necessary to rewire or, you know, debug computers and get them reprogrammed. And this is something that we need as well because we're operating on old, unexamined programming from our very earliest days, plus what we inherit uh, DNA-wise and everything else. So if we're going to just run on automatic pilot, 
without like this marvelous 90-year-old woman going, is this really true? Do I really need to do this? In other words, I need Mm -hmm. to step up and be my own best cheerleader. And that means asking those questions like, do I really have to stay within this boundary? But we're we're habituated and to our programming, and we don't realize it's programming. We we believe some of these things about sort of not being okay in some way that we learned early on for all sorts of reasons, and when we have not examined them, they show up in relationships. In other words, if we could begin to see that the real underlying purpose of our relationships is healing our minds. It's like in our close relationships, whether it's personal, with family members, with close business associates or whatever, those people are not there by accident, and they will trigger these unhealed places in us. And the problem is we think they're the problem. We think they're attacking us. We think they're not caring for us as they should, not realizing that what they're doing is standing there as a mirror and showing us very specific, detailed information about where I need to change my mind. And you can Mm. see how different the dynamics of a relationship can be when one or both party, ideally both, but certainly amazingly, if one realize, you know what, what I'm experiencing in my relationship, I have a hand, I am a co-conspirator in this. In other words, there's, this is revealing to me some things that I need to look at. Note, not that we say, here's where I'm wrong. This is not a matter of wrongness, of badness. It's a matter of being insufficiently wired (laughs) from the time we're little. And Mm -hmm. no one can do that for us. We can be guided and pointed in that direction, but no one can change, like no one can change my mind about and for me except me. So Mm -hmm. we can be so supportive of one another in relationships in this great adventure of healing our minds because when we and healing these old ideas about ourselves that are too small and too hurtful and as we do the relationship flourishes it blossoms there gets to be more compassion more gentleness more kindness more uh, willingness to do everything to help your partner heal as well you can't be very Mm. willing to have help your partner heal if you feel deeply unhealed and hurt yourself. In other words, so this is kind of a, ideally, it's a mutual situation where you realize that relationships can be for all of the wonderful, you might say, surface reasons. And by surface, I don't, that doesn't, that's not a demeaning statement. It means the where you live and who you're living with and, 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 and how you conduct your daily life, but it also means in the interior way as well, you know, so that everybody can feel happier, more at peace, more more peaceful. And the thing that's interesting is that this work called A Course in Miracles, which is really a, a modern statement of ancient wisdom, you know, th- these teachings have been around for 5,000 years, but it's stated uh, for our modern times and the heart of that work is about healing relationships. In other words, it's like because relationships can show us so much about ourselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So what are some of the key principles in A Course of Miracles, just so that people um, can learn a little bit more about it before we get on to a little bit more about uh, the self-healing? Because I would love for you to share uh, okay, an exercise okay. or something that people can actually do to, to start healing themselves. Okay. Um, a couple of things. A Course in Miracles is, as I say, it's a, it's a teaching of non-duality, and that's a little long to get into, but I can say that its purpose is to bring us to a much greater peace of mind than we have now. If one looks around the world, it's like, seems like not a lot of peace of mind going on. 
In other words, there's a great deal of hostility, there's worry, there's lack of safety, there's attack defense and that sort of thing. So it's a work that is literally desired to, designed to rewire our brains through the workbook. There's a text that, that gives extensive material, but the workbook itself is literally, I call it, a spiritual technology for rewiring our brains because it gives us upgraded ideas about ourselves to contemplate, not to figure out and not to learn, but to contemplate. Because it only takes an amazingly short time to make new neural connections in the brain if you will focus and contemplate the idea of, you know, I'm beloved, I'm good. Uh, that sounds very simplistic, and it's not a simplistic work, but in our very no. short period of time. So it's to return us to a place of peace, a place of personal power, like the recognition I am not a victim. I absolutely can learn not to defend myself more effectively because defenses will always backfire, but how to be present, how to feel safe, how to reach out to my full fellow man, how to feel comfortable in any situation in which I find myself. So you think, What's better than peace of mind? Because out of that grows all the other things people are looking for, their sense of happiness, their sense of contentment, their sense of safety. And peace of mind, you might say, is the fertile soil out of which those other things grow. So it's Mm -hmm. a massive, important work, and it's about changing our minds, and it's helping us see that relationships will point exactly to where I need to let go of guilt, let go of shame, let go of my judgments of myself and other people. In other words, that's the whole idea and why relationships can be so profoundly helpful as well as so much fun. (laughs) In other words, it's not Mm -hmm. like this is all (laughs) terrible hard work, um, but it certainly does get us in touch with things that we need to get in touch with. And so far as an exercise, it's really interest. This is one I've done in lots of workshops. And for the listening audience, do try this. What I want people to do is to say, okay, who is the person that you would least in the world like to walk in the room right now, sit down right next to you so that everybody knows that they are somehow with you or in your life or something like that? And then ask yourself, how do you feel? This is just an exercise. This is just imagining, though clearly, that somebody that you just can't stand, the person that you really do not ever want to see again, comes in and sits down next to you. I don't know if you're doing this or not, so I don't know if you have an answer (laughs) or or if our listeners will have answers, but it has never failed once when I've done this in a group for people to go, and you can watch their faces. You can watch them start to do more shallow breathing. You can see, you can see that people can become a little distressed by even thinking about somebody coming in and sitting down to them, which is greatly revealing because it shows, you know what? It's not actually the other person. They're not even here. It's what I think about them, what I fear about them. I'm creating my own emotional state right here on the spot with only my thinking mind engaged. The person could be dead or 5,000 miles away. Don't you think that's interesting? Mm-hmm. So that you can, you can begin to see how, how it's not the other person, it's the things that I believe about myself that the other person brings into my awareness. And Mm -hmm. it it is the most amazing healing work. I have seen people who have been confounded or distressed for their whole lifetimes can begin to get things resolved in a matter of hours. You know, once they see it's not the other person that I have to fix or run away from or defend myself from or not ever be in relationships because they're all so awful or something like that, it's like it's really showing me that there's not a thing the matter with me. 
I just believe things about myself that are too small, and that's causing my hurt and my pain and my emotional distress, which means good news. If it's not the other person doing it so that I don't have to manage them, and it's really my own thoughts and beliefs and programming that's doing it, then I am 100% in charge. And what is a more powerful position than that? Mm-hmm. You see, at, at that point, then, what, I can discard yeah. my safety net because I don't need it any longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think people don't realize that they have this power and because giving up your power, being stuck, being a victim, blaming other people is all powerlessness. And I, I see this so often where people just say, there's nothing I can do. I can't do anything about it. I went on a exactly. date once with a guy who just kept saying, I had no choice. I had no choice. I had to do this. I had to do that. I'm like, you had so many choices. You just not <laughs> like, see your choices. You've got to be kidding. Uh, of course you have choices. And, and right. we haven't realized it because when we were so little, when so much of this is getting laid down, so to speak, we, f- we certainly felt like we didn't have a choice then. And so as adults, when we approach the edge of our comfort zone, like saying no, I was habituated to never, ever, ever say no to anybody. People said no to me. In fact, they said no to me so often that my little brother, who was two years younger than I, thought my name was No-No. He called me (laughs) No-No. We were old enough to go to school, which they thought, well, isn't that cute? It's like, and he was an adorable little boy. But the implications of being told no so often that somebody thinks that's what your name is, that's not Mm. funny at all. You know, so it was like people said no to me, but I wasn't allowed to say no. And I had to work through step after step after step to feel comfortable, and we're all presented with just the little opportunities that work for us. And you might have to pace the floor for 10 minutes. You might have to have butterflies in your stomach. But then go ahead and say what needs to be said. And when you're telling the truth like that, if no is your real answer, everything always works out for everybody concerned. I remember having to do this once a very long time ago, I won't take time with what it was about, but the man was, it was a business thing, and he was not pleased with my saying no. So after I kind of regained my equilibrium, and he did too, I said, you know, I actually think, you know, what he was asking us for isn't going to work because this means you would be dividing your time between Denver and Boulder for some counseling he wanted to do. I lived in Denver at the time. And so we ended this conversation civilly, Six months later, he called me and he said, I'm so glad you said no to me. You Mm. were right. It's been hard enough setting up this practice in Boulder, and if I'd been trying to run back and forth between Boulder and Denver, I could never have made it. So you see, we not only do ourselves a disservice when we don't tell the truth, we're also doing the other people a disservice too. Mm -hmm. We don't even think about that part, but... It's it's very much the case. Yeah, so everybody I totally everybody agree with wins you. and nobody loses when I tell the truth, and just the opposite when I try to play it safe, and and do not come from that place of integrity within myself. And we mm-hmm. come from that place. I want to emphasize once more, not because we're wrong or bad, but because. When you start messing with those things we learned when we were very little, you're hitting survival-level programming. And survival-level programming is programmed in there to try to keep you alive, and one does not mess with that, shall we say, without a little pushback from our own Mm -hmm. uh, built-in systems, which is why we must. It's the only way to be free. I would never trade one single challenge that I've ever had to go through in in living a life of integrity, no matter how little nervous-making it might have been at the time, because the rewards of living a free and powerful life are so worth it. I can't tell you how worth it it is. It's worth everything oh, right. we have to do to look at mm-hmm. that programming, and we can do it with our partners when you decide – 
that that's what you want to do. And even if the other partner doesn't know anything about it, when you change your mind, it automatically changes the dynamics in a relationship. So often somebody will come to see me and they'll say, I wish my husband will come, but he won't. said, you change your mind about yourself and I guarantee things will start to be different in the relationship. And sure enough, because other people who are mirroring us as I have a higher and better sense of myself, they will treat me better. And they won't, nobody mm-hmm. will know why or how this happens, but it happens. That's the advantage yeah. of living a long time and watching this happen a really long time. I can guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I have experienced it in the last 10 years since my divorce, since I started doing this work. And it's changed my relationships with everybody in my life. And it's, it, my kids treat me differently. My mother, yeah. who I had a you know, not so easy relationship with, um, our relationship has grown, um, all of our relationships. And I think we have so much power to shift the energy that we give to somebody else trying to bring us down. Um, Indeed we do. Yeah, it's such powerful work. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I could talk to you for about five more hours. And um, I I love this conversation. My my favorite topic. (laughs) (laughs) Well, perhaps well, thank we'll do you it again so much. these days. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Um, and tell people how they can get in touch with you, Carol. Oh, you can get in touch with me at my website, carolhow.com, C-A-R-O-L-H-O-W-E.com. We have tons and tons of free resources, a marvelous online course that has all kinds of information about this, and we really do hope you will come uh, take advantage of that. I've spent an awful lot of time creating things that can be helpful documents to people, so there's lots there for you to explore. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for doing this beautiful work in the world. You're so welcome, and thank you for doing yours. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for listening today, and I hope you all go on your last first date very soon. Have a great day. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this, um... Five seconds. Oh, switching to GEICO could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop! At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS, wireless, figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.